Hey folks, Pioneer Field Agronomist William Wynn here, coming at you from Southwest Wisconsin. Uh, today I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about a pest that has been relatively overlooked. Corn rootworm uh, is, is a very, can be a very devastating pest if not managed properly. Uh, one, one of the efforts that I'm going to show you today, uh, looking at this uh, sticky trap, is going to be a tool in the toolbox that we can utilize to help understand what kind of populations we have out there in our fields and what kind of pressure and also you know maybe some things we can look at from a management perspective so um, when it comes to corn rootworm beetles or corn rootworms in general uh, there's two species uh, mainly here in southwest wisconsin as you can see on your screen uh, you see the western corn rootworm they are primarily uh, uh, black with some yellow stripes that is the primary pest that we see here uh, we will occasionally, we will find uh, some northerns up here as well. Uh, that is the green uh, corn rootworm beetle that you see on your screen. Um, we will find both of those uh, on these sticky traps, but predominantly what we're seeing are, are the westerns here in southwest Wisconsin. So why do we have these sticky traps out? So we're sitting, we're standing in a corn on corn field here. Uh, it's been corn on corn for five plus years and uh, just trying to get an idea as far as what kind of pressure uh, we're seeing out here and, and also uh, just get an idea on maybe some things we could look forward to in 2021 if, uh, if we do decide to go corn here again based on the pressures that we see. Um, when it comes to putting these sticky cards out, as you can see on your screen, uh, traditionally you're going to want to try to do four to six of these locations in a field. Uh, would like to get at least 100 feet uh, between each trap and to scatter them in a, in a direct line across the field. Uh, I predominantly use orange spray paint. Uh, orange marking spray paint to kind of guide me through the field as that can change a little bit and flags and such can uh, can disappear. So um, as we're hanging these, we want to hang these right around um, ear height. Uh, as you can see, uh, there's, there's a few ear shoots over here. Um, there's one right up here. So we're right around ear height because those beetles are going to want to be feeding on those silks. That's their main uh, food source along with pollen from the tassel. So this field is just getting ready to tassel. We thought we'd get ahead of the game. We had this uh, this trap out uh, about five days ago and already we're, as you can see on the on the screen we're seeing uh some some, be some western beetles on here i don't see any northerns yet so seeing predominantly uh some westerns look like there's probably i don't know five to I don't know, probably eight to ten on this on this trap so far so we're gonna wait another couple of days uh, you want to change these these traps out on a weekly basis and uh take those and count uh what type of beetles you have and exactly what species. So differentiate between the westerns, which are black and yellow, and the northerns, which are green, and uh, tally those up. We're gonna wanna do this for uh, four to six weeks. Uh, traditionally, I try to shoot for five, but it just depends on how the larva egg hatch uh, occurred in your area. Um, and then we're gonna utilize this information uh, looking forward to 2021. So as you can see on your screen, as you approach uh, the 21 beetle average per week mark, uh, if you're under that, we consider that a low pest population. If you're between, between the 21 to 50 uh, average beetles per trap per week, we consider that a moderate pest population. And then so on, as you get towards 50, that's kind of the, the critical mass. As you get to 50 or more, we consider that a high pest population and, and definitely a situation that we want to keep an eye on and look towards rotation to relieve some of those pressures. So as you can see on the screen, uh, we did in 2019 find some high pest populations that were 50 beetles uh, per trap per week uh, or more across the area. So Iowa, Grant, Lafayette County, we did see quite a bit of pressure there in certain spots, little hot spots across the, the area. But then you'll see uh, on the map there where there are uh, a significant amount of circles that uh, there was very little to no pressure. So um, it just depends, it's, it's very localized and that's why we're wanting to deploy these traps again and get you guys the best information that you can use for your local area and uh, also drive some conversations that we can have here this fall as we're planning for 2021 and maybe some things that we can do uh, to mitigate some of these issues um, either through rotation um, through product selections on, on root scores and such. Um, and then also in season, let's not forget, uh, there's gonna be a lot of fungicide being flown on here uh, in the next week or two. Uh, this field here is just almost a tassel, so a fungicide application will be pretty close as far as timing goes. 
Let's not forget that we can also uh, mix in some insecticides if we do in the first one to two, three weeks, see that our, our uh, pest populations are a little high. Uh, we can keep those in check by adding an insecticide to that fungicide application and, and uh, try to drop that population down a bit. So appreciate your time today. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to a Pioneer sales representative uh, or your Pioneer agronomist. Thank you very much. That concludes this Pioneer agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.